Okay, it happens. Okay, can we go for the next scenario? Yes, please. Okay. Your time starts now. A 60-year-old lady presents with history of left-sided loin pain and fever. And uh, the a &E team suspects it's a urosepsis and you are called for to give your opinion. So, um, I will consider this a urology emergency and I'll go see this patient um, immediately um, and assess the patient in line with ABC protocol and instigate um, sepsis 6, um, taking bloods for um, cultures, lactates, urine culture, um, and also giving high floor oxygen, IV fluids, and antibiotics uh, in line with local guidelines. Um, I'll then take a history and examine the patient, establish the duration of pain, um, and also if she's had any previous known stones, um, if she's had any interventions with stones before. I'll ask about her past medical history um, and fitness for surgery, if she's on any anticoagulation. And um, I'll examine this patient with a chaperone, looking at um, her observations in a &E. um, I'll then examine her abdomen, examine the flanks for any tenderness. Uh, and following on from this, I will arrange some tests, including um, urine deep and cultures, um, blood including food blood count, using his calcium, uric acid levels. Um, and then I will, in view of my concern about um, an obstructing kidney so stone, I'll arrange for an urgent CTKU. Okay. Um, regarding CTKUB, is there any different types of CTKUB available? So um, there is the, the low dose CTKUB and, and the standard CTKUB. Um, house feed unit at the radiation exposure being between 2.5 to um, 5 uh, millisieverts. Okay, any criteria you will decide which patient needs low dose and which patient needs high dose? So for, for a low dose CT, um, if the patient is very young, um, if they're a recurrent stone former, um, or um, if I'm anticipating that this patient will require lots of CT in the future, then a low dose CT may be a place to start from. Okay, are you able to see the picture, Shad? Yes, I can see a scout um, film, um, a scout CT film showing the abdomen and pelvis. On the left side, there is um, an opacity um, in the left kidney, in keeping with a staghorn calculus. Um, I can also see a small stone in the right kidney. I need to look at the cross-sectional images to confirm this. Okay, I will take it from top down. So indeed, there's a staghorn stone in the left kidney, um, and there is uh, a right upper pole um, stone The right lower post stone, sorry. There's no obvious ureteric stone that I can see. Okay, so what are we going to do? So, um, in the presence of a staghorn stone on the left side, um, I will explain this diagnosis to the patient. Um, and I, I, I missed if that left kidney was um, obstructed or not. I couldn't, I can't quite uh, recall if there was any hydronephrosis um, on that left kidney. But I would explain that this to the patient that there is a staghorn stone in the left kidney occupying um, almost the entire uh, pelvic elicit system. And this will likely be responsible for um, the fever and pain she's having. I will resuscitate her and administer antibiotics to try and treat her sepsis. And definitive management will be planned uh, down the line. Um, but from the emergency perspective, um, it will be to get on top of our sepsis and control her fevers uh, first. Okay, how are you going to do that? 
So this would involve um, giving out a sepsis protocol, um, IV fluid, IV antibiotics, oxygen, after sending um, sample, urine sample, blood cultures, um, taking lactates, giving oxygen, and um, monitoring high urine output. Okay. I may need to discuss the microbiology um, and also look at her previous urine sensitivities to guide my choice of antibiotic treatment. She had no previous uh, antibiotic sensitivity pattern for her urine. Uh, you are sending the urine sample for culture and sensitivity. What is your choice of empirical antibiotic? So my choice of empirical antibiotic will be um, a broad spectrum antibiotic in combination with um, a stat dose of gentamicin. So if she's not penicillin allergic, I will give her IV chloramoxiclav and a stat dose of gentamicin. Okay. She is getting improved uh, gradually. Uh, what is your plan after two days? She is safe braille for 24 hours. Okay. So at this point, I'll, I will discuss um, definitive management of her stone with her. Um, I'll explain to her that she has a staggering calculus. Um, and I would explain to her the natural history, uh, which will likely lead to progressive uh, renal failure and in complications associated with staggered calculus based on um, the papers um, or, or studies that we know from um, Blandy and Singh, um, as well as Steigman et al. and a recent uh, meta-analysis by um, Al-Sawi et al. So I will be recommending um, treatment of a staggered stone down the line by means of um, a pecutinous nephrolipotomy. Okay. So the patient wishes to know more about the procedure. When are you going to plan and uh, how ne she needs to prepare for that? So with the aid of a BAUS specific information leaflet, I will counsel her explaining the risks, benefits of this procedure, explaining alternatives um, and what the PCNL entails. Uh, the benefit is to treat the stack on stone in the left kidney by um, making a puncture um, into that kidney um, and gaining access and fragmenting the stone um, with um, energy in the form of ultrasound and lithoclast um, or, or, or pneumatic energy and, and try to clear the stones. The risks include risks associated with um, gaining access, which include um, damage to surrounding structures such as the bowel, um, spleen and, and damage to renal vessels. Um, risk associated with the procedure, such as um, damage to the kidney, bleeding, failure to clear the stones in one setting, um, requirements for nephrostomy uh, and maybe stents. Um, I would also explain to her the, the risk of um, residual fragments and um, but that this procedure gives her the better chance, the best chance of, of clearing the stones on that side. I will mention the alternatives of flexible uteroscopy and shock of uterotripsy. However, this will not be recommended for um, a star calculus. Okay, what are the types of PCNL you are aware of? So, um, in terms of position or? Yeah, both position and the size of sheath possibly. Okay, so the, the types of PCNL uh, in terms of access to the, um, the standard PCNS, mini PCNL, um, ultra mini PCNL, and micro. Um, and the sizes will depend on the, the access size. So standard PCNL will be um, 24 to 30 French. Um, mini will be, I think, 16 to 18 French. Um, and then ultra mini and, and micro PCNL will be uh, even lesser sizes in that order. Um, PCNL could also be um, done prone or supine. Um, and so this will need to be discussed with the patient as well. So what kind of PCNL you are planning for her? So I will give in the stack on stone and the size of it. Um, I'll be planning for um, a mini PCNL 
um, in a supine position, as that would also grant um, a retrograde access if, if necessary at the same time. Okay, we'll stop there. Good. Another very straightforward scenario. Uh, we haven't gone to the depth of PCNL complications follow up. Maybe as a reflection, you should be able to tailor your answers in the initial stages. Equally, sepsis is important. If there is a small lacunae in presenting the sepsis 6 or any of the components, examiners will stay there to make sure you are safe and you are good in treating the initial emergency presentation. There is no doubt in that. But at the same time, we need to balance one way or another so that you can reach a little bit more. Otherwise, yeah. good, good presentation, whatever you said, you are doing your good. Um, I'm glad that you brought in sepsis 6 protocol. I'm glad you're able to pick that small stone on the right side. When you are consenting for the patient for the left PCNL, it will be nice if you brought in that there is a 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter stone on the right side, which I will advise the patient for conservative management for monitoring or later okay. we can even treat with ESWL. So keep that yeah. in the brackets in your mind. Okay. And um, low dose CT. The indication for low dose CT is BMI less than 30. Any patient okay. with BMI more than 30, we need to give normal CT because of the fatty abdominal apron, low dose CT will not give the clarity in the stone situation. So BMI, you need to bring in less okay. than 30, more than 30 for low dose and high dose CT. Yeah, types of PCNL, if there is a question, no need to ask the examiner whether it's due to the positioning or size. You can just go on say it is divided into three different classifications, one based upon the position and then go try to bring in the terms like uh, Gladico, Modified, Valdavia yeah. position, something like that. Because you guys are, I, am, I know that you guys are reading all these terms with a lot mm. of difficulty. There is no point. There is no price if you are not bringing it. Withholding information. Yeah, yeah, if you're not bringing it in the 10 minutes. So you should be able to bring just one term, Gladico modification of Valdavia position, whenever you are seeing mm. point PCNL. That really gives an examiner a good impression, okay, you are able to bring in the terminologies. Yeah. Uh, mini PCNL, I will say even up to 20 French. There are some studies which included up to 22 French. So any okay. standard PCNL, 22 to 34 French. Mini PCNL, say 16 to 22 French, okay. uh, even though 22 is really big. And then try to remember about the Ultra Mini PCNL and the Micro PCNL also. Uh, yeah. They won't ask much because we are not doing that frequently. Um, and uh, glad that you brought in supine and uh, I thought of asking some questions like why supine? What is the advantage of supine compared to prone okay. by the time the time has run? Yes, yeah. supine has its own advantages for the surgeon and also for the anesthetic especially. It saves a lot of time in repositioning and the position related injuries are much less in supine PCNL. Even though the name is supine, we are really tilting the patient um, adequate enough to reach the posterior calyx. So in essence, we are re still reaching the same posterior calyx. We are not puncturing the anterior calyx. That has to be okay. well understood and yeah. um, very rarely say for example if this patient i haven't taken you through the scenario of sepsis you may have saved a minute and a half so we may be discussing the steps in the pcnl what is the energy source etc super yeah. pcnl you should be able to i mean especially if it is a mini pcnl you should be able to bring the energy source of laser also because yeah. uh, it gives excellent vision and with uh, whirlpool effect you can clear maximum amount of stones um, for this type of stagon stone, which is almost a complete stagon stone, my preference is uh, supine standard PCNL. Nothing okay. wrong in mini PCNL, but uh, always when you have multiple options, there is something which is the best. And then mm. we have the second and third options. And sometimes we regularly do the second and third option. In practice, I will certainly do a supine mini PCNL, no doubt in that. Okay. But in the exam, you can say supine or prone standard PCNL is the ideal one, but yeah. I'm aware that people will do even the mini PCNL also. Nothing wrong in it. Okay. Um, yeah. And you may need another puncture and um, nothing wrong in it with flexible nephroscope. You can avoid some punctures also. 
Yeah. Uh, regarding the long term follow up of patients treated conservatively, the Stargon patients, especially the elderly patients treated conservatively, there is one article from Mr. Subramaniam et al. also. Uh, okay. Which is also relatively 2015, 2016 recent article. Okay. Uh, I will try to get that and share it in the Yeah, program. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. 